Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, Dr. Regina Mahaule. Let me again thank and acknowledge colleagues from the different provinces. I thank you very much for your attendance. And I know I always tell people that to be an MEC, uh, Dr. Kate Tate, I'll take it from, from the last interaction, the free state with Ruhr. Yeah, so MEC is Ruhr. And for you to have been here with us, it means a lot. Thank you very much for your attendance. I'll also thank the Minister of Seashells, Dr. Valentin, in absentia. And I was very grateful that he took the time to be with us because he's quite correct that their system of education, each time we go to SACMEC, they will be leading. And at one stage I asked, if it was actually his predecessor, the Minister of Education in Seychelles, and say, how do we get it right? Because we're really leading in SACMEC. And then the first question she asked me was, when children start going to school? I said, age six, she says, hey, by the time they come to school, they're three years behind us. So we won't catch us emphasizing the early childhood development program, which has really made their system solid. It says you can do anything you can for tests, unless you strengthen day, don't even try to get closer to us, you won't get us. So let me also, the honorable chair, members of the portfolio who attended here, heads of department, our academics, researchers, our partners from civil society, our partners also from government. Thank you very much for attending, for our principals who also joined us and all the other different people who joined us on virtual. As the department were very grateful and very appreciative. But also more important, our strategic partners, teacher unions, uh, and I always say this, uh, DM is a former teacher, to say teachers carry the system. They carry all of us. We're on their shoulders. So I really want to acknowledge them respectfully. Our SGBs who make our lives better, uh, good in different provinces, our statutory bodies, learner formations, the private sector that always carries us, non-governmental organizations and the media, but also esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. And indeed, we've come to an end of yet another successful basic education sector, Lekhotla. And I wish to thank every one of you who has been part of this important three long but very fruitful days of deliberation. And in the spirit of partnership and commitment, this gathering resonates well. MC Northwest, we always repeat this. So meaning it takes a village to raise a child. So child, is closer than to what and I told you, the African Kutwanji, Mwana, Sijo, Watakane. So, Uzanga, Goma Kelwan, each of the Kuzans was with two leg. But it's something like a child belongs to the mother, to the family, and the community at large. It is undeniable that the very first presentation by Dr. Mabokwani, Professor Tim Lonson, and Gustafson, as well as Mema Holwani and Mansfield, did pitch the basic education Lukhotla to a very high level. Then the, the intellectual discussions and debates which ensued made us to appreciate the different roles that all of us are enjoined by our organizations to play in the basic education sector. At the outset, I wish to thank everyone who actively and pass passively participated in this year's Lukhotla. We had organized this Lokotla under the theme equipping learners with knowledge and skills for a changing world in the context of COVID-19. And did anchor presentations, deliberations, 
and debates on the following main objectives. First, which was to assess the midterm performance of the sixth administration in basic education, which I think came out quite well and we all got a sense of where we are. To interrogate the impact and cost, both materially and humanly, of COVID-19 on learning losses, learner dropout, and basic education broadly. But to also to discuss and present a comprehensive recovery plan to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 and recover the learning losses. To deliberate on the utilization of assessment practices and data to develop strategies to improve the quality and efficiency of learning outcomes and bolster monitoring and evaluation oversight. We also, if you recall, we said we want to assess the progress that we have made in the implementation of programs and mechanisms to equip our learners with knowledge and skills for a changing world, to elucidate the critical elements of strengthening the foundations for learning, as well as efficiency and accountability in the system, and to strengthen the use of information communication technology to support the delivery of our curriculum. And I can share with you colleagues that the reason I was not here in the morning with a special cabinet to focus on connectivity in the country, which we call Connect South Africa. And for me, it was critical because I just thought if we talk about rebooting, rebuilding, ICTs are going to be at the center and therefore have to make sure that if there are discussions around these ICTs, the case of education is put forward to the biggest sector and the most important sectors at NUSU because we look after the most important people of the nation, which are the children of the nation. So I always repeat that to say, we have your assets as a nation. So anything you do, make sure that we get the first preference because we're looking after the most important people in the country or for the nation, which is the children. So it was also very heartwarming, uh, Dr. Mahoudi, that we also focused on I see this in education because, as I say, I see our future or our success to reboot and rebuild, mainly being hinged around ICTs in education. But again, we wanted to strengthen the package of care and support for the vulnerable learners, especially the boy child on COVID-19 context and future pandemics. Because again, this for me, Doctor, it's very important. I always say when you talk about economics and other things, say, unless we can develop holistic children, we're like building castles for pigs. We have to make sure that the product that comes from the system, it's a product that is worth the effort we're putting in it. Because if they're going to end up in drugs, with drugs, under the bridges, it's already a waste of our time. So we should make sure that we strengthen our packages of care and support for, for, for vulnerable learners and that they don't fall through the cracks, but also social decay or decadence does not even affect them. And that's one other area which I think we should not lose focus on, but also to discuss mechanism to enable all teachers to engage in professional continuous learning and to ensure that they are equipped with knowledge and skills to deliver the curriculum within the context of a changing world. And as I said, because the system is on the shoulders of teachers, Unless we're able or we're happy with the work that we're doing with teachers, we're able to work with them, we're doomed to fail. So this for me was quite critical that we did focus on engaging on matters in professional development of teachers and to interrogate mechanisms for meaningful and sustainable community mobilization and partnerships in education. Chair, I'm particularly inspired by the national and international experience and innovative practices shared by many speakers on equipping learners with knowledge and skills for a changing world in the context of COVID-19, including the monitoring of learner performance during pandemic. So the issues discussed here, just to mention them, the impact and the cost of COVID-19 in education and health, monitoring the context and its effect continues to be extremely important if indeed we are to protect this current generation. So program director, ladies and gentlemen, a clear and call to make action has been amply ampl amplified in this record. I know one of the last speakers said, actions, 
worker. So, and I think that's what we also want to support. Uh, I think it's on to call it Sulaboland or Reamba. Abasavata Wamba, but to say action. We must agree that COVID 19 has taught us a number of lessons, but the manner in which the sector and the system responds to the challenges imposed on us should not be undermined. As South Africa, we have been applauded for our interventions to mitigate against the devastating impact of COVID-19 and has further re and this local has further re-energized us to continue rebooting as uh, the CEO of NECT has really spelled out that we have to, in line with their recommendations and proposals, that we have to continue to see how we reboot the system. I've been visiting schools uh, DM, and each time I say to teachers, we want all our learners back to school. Children's clap hands say, hey, we want to come back. Then teacher says, they're better off their half minister. I said, uh -uh. <laughs> we have to reboot, we have to bring them back. So we have to reboot, we have to recalibrate, and we have to re continue to reposition our sector to withstand whatever pandemic or life-threatening challenges we may face. Because indeed, whether it's called Omicron, it still continues to pose life-threatening challenges. But at the end of the day, you are saying no child should be left behind and we have to mitigate against any other thing which undermines us. So program director with all the commissions, and I'm not going to repeat what we said, but we noted also from the notes that I received even from the different commissions that the, the, the Lakota has provided us with most critical recommendations that they wish us to amplify, but also to work on. So indeed, as you correctly said, uh, 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 Dr. Mohaulio, we will expect and request the leaders co of commissions to even, you know, COVID has taught us something easier and nicer. Just take two hours, link, and help us to finalize some of the things. So I don't, won't go through all the recommendations because we've discussed them here. And as I said, there are areas that we're going to continue engaging the heads of commissions to continue to also won't go into commission to say, this is what we found in commission one, commission two up to commission five. But as Dr. Mahalo was doing, it's also on our part to say, but we still feel there are gaps and we would want the secretariat to encourage you to meet again, to finalize the work that we, uh, you would have begun. But as, as the basic education department, we wish to assure the, this Lokota that we commit to recalibrate, to reboot, to reposition the basic education system in line with the recommendations of the seventh basic education Lokota. We do not see this Lokota as another talk shop for us to achieve the ideals of equipping our learners with knowledge and skills and competencies of a changing world in the context of COVID-19. Government, the basic education sector in its totality must continue to commit to collaborate and jointly operationalize the recommendations of this Lakota. We are indeed appreciative of the inputs that we received from the Minister of Seychelles, Dr. Valentin on ECD, making ECD compulsory has indeed long-term benefits. The relocation of ECD program from the Department of Social Development to basic education is one of the necessary steps to declare ECD as compulsory. I'm very excited to announce that the Basic Education Amendment Bill, Bella, which has been tabled in Parliament for consideration, does also pronounce on grade R as compulsory. So, so Program Director DBE will factor the recommendations of this Lekhotla in our strategic plans, programs, and interventions. The map Makotla's, the Makotla we have been coordinated from the first one have turned out to be reservoir of wisdom, knowledge, and experience for us as the sector. Hence, the basic education system has been a stable and on the rise, as one of the leaders from unions said, through our collaboration, through our working together, but also sharing ideas on how we can take the process forward. Because all of us come from different walks in life and have different experiences and all those put together make the system even richer. 
So I really want again, uh, number one, you put number one, congratulate the class of 2021, which has clearly demonstrated that with dedication, with focus and resilience, the sky is the limit. The number of qualitative and quantitative passes in the class of 2021 has attained is an indisputable state a testament on the intervention of programs and support that we've been receiving, not only from our teachers or from ourselves as a sector, but also from the private sector, WOSA metric, and all other support that we really have been receiving from outside. So this year, we have introduced assessment studies in the system, which focus on assessment for and, for and of learning, as well as the system itself. And all these endeavors are intended to equip learners with knowledge and skills and competencies for a changing world. And in those, with those words, uh, TM, I really want to thank all the participants, both physically present here. Thank you very much for your attendance, but also thank all the participants who also joined us on virtual. I did even report to, because we had, as I said, this cabinet meeting in the morning, focusing on ICTs and connectivity in government this morning. And I did say that we have, I didn't even say how it was, I said we have a Lekotla with more than a thousand people. And I could see that <laughs> there was a discomfort and that I had to clarify to say, I, COVID told us that we can, taught us that we can go virtual. So I really want to thank the participants that joined us virtually, but also thank you very much and most sincerely. Yeah.